Hello guys, welcome back to my channel San and Nastaki. And today we are going to discuss another concept of uh, SAN switch that is NPV. In previous video, we discussed what is NPIV, and today we are going to discuss what is NPV. How does it work? Why we need NPV? And uh, some of the used case scenario where we can use NPV. So before proceeding further, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that whatever new video I upload in my series or in my entire channel you'll get a notification immediately. First of all, let's try to understand what is NPV in SAN switch. So NPV stands for N port virtualization and this feature is a switch level feature. So you have to enable NPV in switch level. So NPIV is a port level features, but uh, NPV is a switch level features in terms of definition npv enabled switch act as a proxy switch and bypass all fc services request to its uplink switch so this definition will be more clear when we will discuss npv with the help of a diagram so stay tuned for that now npv is a cisco specific term but other vendors call it as a different name now one question for you guys, it may be very simple, but let's see how many are aware of it. So what is the equivalent terminology of NPV in case of brocade? So whatever answer you have, you can give it in comment uh, section. Now let's discuss how NPV works. So in usual case, whenever a SAN switch is connected to a fabric, first of all, it will be assigned or it will get a domain ID from the core switch and then it will start participating in fabric services like uh, assigning of fc id to the host connected to it so if the sand switch is npv enabled then it will not have any domain id and does not participate in in any fc services so in this case whatever device connected to the npv enabled switch such as host switch or ucs gets the respective fc services from its uplink switch so all these definitions we will uh, try to understand in upcoming slides with the help of uh, a diagram so this is a very simple npv san network connectivity so this is a npv core switch where a npv device is connected to it and this is the device where the npv is enabled and these are the host which are connected to npv device first of all let's discuss how things works if the device is not npv enabled so once this device is connected to the core switch it will get a domain id and once it gets a domain id and the hosts are connected to this switch all these hosts will be assigned a fc id during the f loggy process now if this device is npv enabled then what will happen that whenever the host is connected to this uh, npv device it will send the request to this device for f loggy process but instead of processing that request this device will bypass the request to uplink switch that is this core switch and the fcid allocations will happen from the core switch not from the switch where the hosts are connected so similarly apart from that fcid allocations whatever request this npv device gets from the device which is connected to it it will bypass those requests to its uplink switch so now let's discuss some of the used case scenario of npv so the very rare scenario is that if the fabric requires more than 239 switches or there is a limitations of domain id in the fabric so in a fabric the maximum number of domain ids are 239 or in another terms we can say that uh, in a fabric you can have only 239 number of sand switches but this scenario is pretty much uh, rare and i have not seen any environment where we have uh, more than 239 number of switches so the second used case scenario is little bit uh, practical to see in some environment that is multi vendor sand switches are in same fabric in interoperability mode so what does this mean is that if you have a fabric 
which consists of Cisco switches, but you also have some brocade switches in your environment and all those switches that is brocade and Cisco switches are connected to the same fabric. Then NPV is the features which is used for the communication between those two switches and those two different switches must be in interoperability modes. Now another scenario is that three steps of migration of sense switches from one vendor to another vendor. So let's consider see if you have some brocade switches and now if you want to migrate those brocade switches to a Cisco switches then in pre steps or the pre steps of migrations you can enable the brocade switches as NPV and connect those switches to your Cisco switches. So migration steps is a little bit complex and uh, it's a bit out of scope for beginners that's why I'm not explaining what are the exact steps but uh, these are the most uh, practical scenarios where you will use NPV. Now let's try to understand the used case scenario of NPV with the help of a diagram. So this is the same diagram that I have explained earlier. So the first scenario is that if your fabric have 239 number of fan switches. So as we know that each fan switch in the fabric should have a unique domain ID. And if you have 239 number of uh, switches, then all the switches will have unique domain ID. So this in turn, the maximum number of domain ID that is 239 is reached. You need more switches in your environment. So this scenario is pretty much uh, rare. And uh, the second scenario is that if you have a sense switch of different vendor. So let's consider that uh, your core switch is uh, Cisco switch. And if you have a brocade switch connected as edge switch and that brocade switch has connection from various host. So if you enable NPV to that brocade switch, then all the host connected to it sends the request to the core switch for all fiber channel services. And in turns, the brocade switch will be invisible to the entire fabric. And this setup will also be helpful if you are migrating your brocade switches to Cisco switches or your Cisco switches to your brocade switches. So that's a bit complex uh, steps to be covered up. So if requires, I will definitely make a separate video on those steps where I will be explaining how we can migrate the brocade switches to the sand switches in a larger environment. So hope this video is helpful to you guys and you have a little bit or much more clear idea about uh, NPV and if you have any questions or any knowledge to share then uh, put your feedback in uh, comment section and uh, once again thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more upcoming videos regarding SAN and NAS technology.